the mihrab signed by Ali ibn Muhammad and dated Shaban 663 or May 1265 is the most important ensemble of tiles in the Doris Duke Foundation at Shangri-La. Its importance is shown by its size. It's 12, we saw this morning, it's over 12 and a half feet or almost four meters. By its composition, it's about 70 tiles. By its materials and techniques, as we heard yesterday, Fritware overglaze painted with luster is the most expensive kind of tile decoration, requiring extra fuel, second firing, special reducing kiln, and highly specialized technology. And furthermore, its importance is shown by its position at Shangri-La. It's accorded pride of place. It's positioned along the corridor from the Lanai. And as Sharon Littlefield noted in her handbook, at the start of a central axis that leads down from the living room across the pool, straight through where we're sitting right now and onto Diamond Head. So looking closely at this mihrab and its mates, we can see why it's so important, how it was made, and how it might be reconstructed. And those are the three things I'd like to do in this presentation. And there you see it in situ here. It is one of six surviving examples of mihrab ensembles. So the earliest is one signed by Abu Zaid in Rabi 2612 or 1 August 1215 that's in the shrine of Imam Reza in Meshed. And this is a photograph you saw yesterday. It is the only color reproduction I know of this mihrab, which is very hard to get to. You are not allowed. Uh, you could not have seen it in situ. It was part of a major shrine renovation in the early 13th century which comprises the finest early surviving array of tiles, a dado, the dado down here, surmounted by friezes, door surround over here, and two mihrabs. It was, if I understand from Oliver's book, and correct me, Oliver, moved to the Shrine Museum? Okay. Uh, so that's where we can see it if we get to Meshed. Uh, it measures two and a half meters, 2.4 meters by 1.84. So these are scaled. If you compare it to Shangri-La, it is about two thirds of the size of Shangri-La. So there they are scaled together. So the one in Meshed is about two thirds the size of the one here. There is a second mihrab, number two up here in Meshed, which is anonymous. It is not signed, it is not dated. It also was moved to the Shrine Museum. Unfortunately, no dimensions are given from that, for that one, but I tried to approximate the width by comparing it to number one, which is, is um, uh, whose dimensions are given by comparing the width of the outer framing inscription. It looks a little big, bigger than Abu Zaid's. It probably was part of the same reconstruction in the early 13th century, and perhaps by the same tile masters. Number three is the mihrab we saw yesterday from the Maidan, and these are arranged in chronological order. The one from the Maidan Mosque in Kashan, signed by Al Hassan ibn Arab Shah in Safar 623 or February 1226, that has now been moved to the Islamic Museum in Berlin. And this was the key monument, or one of the key monuments used by Richard Eddinghausen in identifying the Kashan style of luster painting. It measures uh, 2.84 meters by 1.88 and has 74 tiles, so about the same number of tiles as Shangri-La, but uh, considerably smaller. Its provenance is quite clear. It was seen in situ in the Maidan Mosque in Kashan, seen by Jane Dulefwa when she traveled through Iran in 1881. Her book was then published in 1887. After that, it showed up for sale in 1913 at Vincent Robinson and Sons in London. And this is taken from the article in the Burlington Magazine in which the sale was published. It belonged to the collection of Major John Roger Priest, who was an electrical engineer who had been sent to set up the telegraph service in Persia and became British consul in Isfahan. The article noted that it had been seen in situ in 1881, but since then had been removed piece by piece 
and patiently collected over the past 30 year, 20 years. It was eventually brought to England, loaned to the V&A, who declined to purchase it, I understand. Uh, and the article also noted that already by this time in 1913, it had been repaired. So if you compare the Diolafois and the 1913 view, uh, parts, the missing parts had already been restored by this point, and the Quranic inscriptions reconstructed with the aid, it said in the article, of a calligrapher from Tehran. It was then acquired after this sale by the Berlin Museum, which I find interesting that Berlin was acquiring things in 1913, along with several other tiles from the priest's collection. The fourth mihrab in the series is also from the tomb of Imam Reza in Meshed, dated 640 or 1242, and signed by Ali ibn Muhammad ibn Abi Tahir, the same person who signed the mihrab here in Shangri-La, but 23 years earlier. So we have a 23-year gap between this one and the one we just saw up in the corridor. According to Oliver's magisterial study, once again, it measures 1.9 by 1.25, so there it is compared to Honolulu again. So it is about half, excuse me, about half the size of the one in Honolulu. So the fifth, chronologically, is the one uh, right here in Honolulu. And the sixth and last in our series of mihrab ensembles is from the Dar Bahesht, or Imam Zadeh Ali ibn Jafar in Qom, moved to the Tehran Museum signed by Yusuf ibn Ali, ibn Muhammad ibn Abi Tahir, the son, and I should tell you that your website says grandson, which is incorrect, the son of the potter who did the mihrab right up the way, but 71 years later, and that's one of the problems we're going to need to confront. Is it plausible that a son and father worked 71 years apart? It measures 3.28 by 2.12, so it is slightly smaller, and again, I've tried to scale the images here, slightly smaller than the one here in um, Shangri-La. So one of the reasons already, I think you can see that the Shangri-La mihrab is so important. First of all, we can see it, and we can't see most of these other ones, but second of all, it is the largest surviving one that we have. And here I've put all six up in chronological order, but not scale to size, because I couldn't do that so you could see anything. Uh, the Shangri-La mihrab fits in the middle of the 119 year span of luster mihrabs that have survived, 122 years if you're counting by the Hijra calendar. And it fits the basic history of luster tiles so well documented in Oliver's monograph.